All right, this is part three. Um, my camera likes to shut off after seven minutes for some reason. So what you want to do now, since you got your gas tank loose, I'm going to start off kind of uh, where I left off. Um, it's kind of hard to show you what to do, but uh, crap. So you have your vice grip on the on the fuel line, and what you want to do after that is you want this. It, they usually have alligator clamps look like this, the little clamps that you just kind of clamp like that, and you can take it off with the pliers or whatever. Um, so, but I took those off because you don't really need them. Uh, maybe if you want them for sort of safety measures. What I do when I take the gas off, I do it really quickly. I take the hose off, and then I just lift it up. You get a little bit of gas everywhere, but not too much. Um, but then you got your gas tank off. Uh, you can get an upgraded gas tank if you have a go kart, or if it's just for like a leaf blower or something. I mean, not leaf blower, um, wood chipper, or uh, or snow blower or whatever. Um, there are parts you can upgrade, and then take the fuel line out, and then you can connect it again if you want to. Some gas might come out of the fuel line because it's the gravitational pull or whatever. Um, so you want to put that back on, or you don't have to. So. Gas out. So you can attach that again, and then you can just let that sit over your gas can and drain. It's quite a bit of gas. But it cleans your workbench, I guess. So, all right. So you can set that aside if you want to. You can drain it with some kind of rig. Uh, so now it kind of looks like. A Honda Crown engine. So you can see what it looks like now. And so, what you want to do now is I haven't really gotten this far at this point, but I do know how to take it apart from here. Um, all right, so. Want to take the, um, the shroud off or the the, the pull cord? Um, this is called the shroud. So you also take your fifth, uh, five sixteenth socket or wrench or whatever you got, and then you also take that off. This might need a little snap. I have only two on on here. There might be three, but I just have two. Um, so take those off, and those are really small. Super, super small, so keep, make sure you keep those in a um, place you can remember where they are. And then you got the bottom here. Take that one off. And when it comes loose, you can either uh, finger untighten it, or you can take the socket like I do, and untighten it like that. It's up to you. And then that'll come off. Should come off with ease. Uh, so then you just set that aside. And there might be some grease on it a little bit. Like I said, you can wear gloves if you want to. So there's the, the pull cord. Now, if your engine's acting up, your pull cord might be broken. Uh, I, can, I can make a video on how to switch that, but there's tons of videos out there on how to switch your pull cord. Uh, probably not on a Predator, but everything's the same. Um, essentially the same type of function. So there's that. Set that aside. I don't really have a clean workbench, but uh, I know where everything is. So now you want to. Your Predator engine should have come with a tool to take it off. Looks like this. It's quite weak um, and might strip already. But uh, what you want to do? I think I can take it off with this. I've already taken the. Um, see what I mean? or Home Depot or Hover Freight or whatever, or you can grab yourself a socket. I believe I have one. Just a second. Alright. So, uh, this one works. That's too big.
All right, this one's perfect. This is a three fourths. Uh, you don't have to have a deep socket for it. I'll show you. So that's what it looks like. So you don't need a deep. Oh crap! My carburetor just tipped over. Crap. Oh well. Um, so that's what it looks like. Sorry, the sun's in your the eyes. But uh, it's not a deep socket. You can get a deep socket if you want to. If you're doing drill starting or something, that might come in use. So now what you want to do, you want to take your wrench and put that on there. And then get a screwdriver or something. It might take some force, it might not. So if you think your screwdriver might break, you can go ahead and get something tougher. Uh, mine just needs a little smack. Uh, mostly because that um, tool didn't work very well. So once you get that off, you can take it off. And you can take it off like that. And that comes off like this. It should look like this. It's got some grips on it. Uh, so put that aside. Make sure it's in a nice safe area. And you can take that off. And you get this, uh, this coupling or whatever um, comes on it. Um, put that aside. And then you want to take the shroud off. So now, what you're going to do, you're going to take your 516 and you're going to take the shroud off. So there should be four bolts, one up here, one over here, one below, and one on this side. So you're going to take that off. And yours probably might be a little hard to take off. It might have Loctite on them. Um, like I said, I've taken this apart. The only thing I haven't taken apart yet is the piston head or the, uh, the cylinder head. So set those aside. Um, these are a little bit bigger than the other ones, so make sure you have them in a safe place. I recommend putting them inside the, the coupling uh, so you know they go to the flywheel. That's just my advice. Hey Carl, what? Did you happen to know why I don't have any sound on the TV?